Well, welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So today you find me in my pantry, um, just enjoying all the fruits of my labor, one of my pantries, I should say. And you may notice I have two huge stacks of books. So I've been wanting to do this video for quite some time and I want to present it in such a way that it does not sound overwhelming or make anyone feel like they're not on the right path or they need to do more. That is totally not my intention. My intention today is to encourage you about 10 things you need to learn now. I'm sure you've heard lately in the news a lot of chatter about supply and demand, about inflation, about procuring the items that you and your family need, and perhaps there's some supply chain interruptions. But what you don't hear in the news is talk about less reliance on being a consumer and more reliance on being self-sufficient. So that is really the theme of my discussion today. And y'all might think, oh gosh, a sit down video, <coughs> pardon me, is so much easier to do. And let me tell you, I, I put a lot of time and thought and note taking and research into these type of videos. Far easier for me to cook a meal or make a batch of soap. <laughs> but I wanted to capture some of my thoughts as well as some information that I wanted to research and perhaps provide some guidance to you about. So let's get started. So why would you want to be more self-reliant? Today, more than ever, we have the ability at our fingertips to pick up our phones or our mobile device and punch in what we want and it magically appears from Amazon on your doorstep, sometimes even the same day, depending on the product. So the lines to supply are very, very different than when I was a child and also a young adult. And I've shared before, I'm 60 years old. I was born in 1961. And if you wanted something, there was no World Wide Web. <laughs> there was no internet. You straight up needed to go to the store to buy it. But why would you want to be more self-reliant? Well, first and foremost, you want to cultivate your independence from being so dependent on the supply chain for a few reasons. One is lost wages. You know, I have a lot of friends who maybe had a second job to supplement their income and that job went away first with some events where certain stores were shut down, let's just say it that way. And then because now full-time people are needed, part-time jobs have become less available. So lost wages could be a reason that you want to be more self-sufficient. There's also uncertain job security. You know, if one as a nurse, I never struggled to find a job and I really had three major jobs in my lifetime in my 40 year career because nurses are very in demand. But as I rose in the ranks from a direct care nurse to a managerial nurse, many companies would change their structure, eliminate positions. So there's all sorts of reasons your job security could change in today's world. You also want to be more independent because of harsh weather. I think I've had one of the oddest summers that I've had in many, many years. So you know how Facebook will give you the reminder of what you posted like a year ago. So yesterday my, my memory was trying to resist turning on the heat. And let me tell you, the AC is running right now. Even in Ohio, we have had unseasonably warm temperatures and it's expected to continue which is quite rare for October to the end of the week. I can remember a year when my son was very small that we had a heavy, heavy snow on Halloween. So I have this sneaking suspicion that we might perhaps have a harsh winter here. And I've shared before, 
I live near the I-70 corridor, which cuts across east and west across Ohio. And many, many miles either side of that tend to get a lot of ice. And ice is the one weather event that will kill your power. <laughs> and it will also bring things to a standstill because it's very difficult to travel on ice, even with uh, ice melt or different road treatments. Another reason you might want to become more self-reliant is because of economic recession and inflation. Now I have these huge pantries, but that does not at this point stop my need to get certain fresh things about every two weeks. So whether that is butter, um, if it's not in season, a certain fresh fruit or vegetable, um, eggs, those type of things, I still have to go to the store. And I have to tell you all, I am astounded at the price changes. Things aren't just going up 5% or 10%. Sometimes they're doubling, sometimes even more. And with supply chain issues, prices are being greatly inflated in order to make sure the person, I guess, really wants to have the item they're trying to buy. So think back to canners just being non-existent. I tried to provide a link to the Ball Electric Canner and there was none available on Facebook and the prices have creeped up and up and up. If you are more self-reliant in these 10 areas I'm going to share, the recession and the price inflation would affect you less and therefore affect your quality of life less. There could also be commercial contamination or commercial shortages. I've spoken before about the year the rye wheat crop, or the not the rye wheat, the rye grain crop failed. And you literally could not find rye anywhere, anywhere. Uh, you've all seen television spots or heard in the news where there is a large recall due to and perhaps in a meat packing plant due to an E. coli outbreak or a salmonella outbreak. If you had other ways to feed yourself and your family, that is every reason you might want to be more independent or more self-reliant. So I'm not talking about going back to pioneer times. And it's very easy to idealize the good old days. Um, I'm not talking about having a lower standard of living or obtaining food by struggling and not being able to use any modern conveniences. That's not what I mean at all by this discussion. Really, I wanna encourage all of us, myself included, and I'm gonna talk about what I need to do to be more self-reliant, to go forward to a new and even better kind of life than I have presently today. So way back in the day, <laughs> home ec was a, a mandatory course, if you will, in junior high school for me. In seventh grade, you started taking home ec and it was a combination of sewing and cooking. And that was something that, only, well, only females were signed up in the classes I took. In, I took every bit of home ec and advanced home ec that I possibly could. In my junior and senior years, I actually switched to a parochial school by my choice, and they had a fabulous home economics course. When my son, who's now 36, was in school, it was shop class for the guys, home ec for the girls, and then they started half a year of home ec, half a year of shop, and then they flip-flopped so that the guys and the gals were getting the same information across the board. The reason that home economics, and that term is no longer used in schools, was removed is number one, it was thought to be sexist. And it was also thought that these were skills that could be learned at home. And with the advent of technology, computers, etc., 
those subjects push their way into the curriculum and with something having to go, that was a subject that those who were making the decision said, you know what, that can be taught at home. That really doesn't need to be in our course curriculum. So what we've ended up with is students who are now missing some very basic information. So did I only learn cooking and sewing? No, I learned financial management, budgeting, how to write a check, uh, how to be professional, uh, household management, basic home repairs. There was so much good information in the more advanced classes. And so unless I'll say a child is learning that in home, at home, kids coming up today may not have that skill set and therefore are even more reliant on being a consumer. So as I was preparing to do this video, off the top of my head, I sat down and I made a list of important skills you need today to be more self-reliant. And I came up with quite a list. So I've managed to narrow it down to 10 main categories. And some of these you'll be like, oh, psh, I got that. And some of these, I hope, will give you some food for thought and encourage you to learn and grow in your own self-reliance journey. So number one, grow your own food. Now that does not mean grow all of your own food. And one of the reasons I chose to do this video in this room is because what is in this room, with some exceptions, is not food that I grew. This is food that I purchased as a consumer. As I was organizing my pantry, now I can't go out and grow <laughs> fields of wheat, you know, there are limits to it. But I realized that some of my canned goods were things that I absolutely could grow here on my little homestead. So I'll tell y'all a little secret, don't tell anyone. I have grown green beans, I have canned green beans. I decided this year I wasn't growing green beans because when I was young, my job was to string and break green beans for my mother so that she could can them. I hated that job. And my mom always got a type of bean called half runner, <laughs> which is the stringiest bean on the planet. Very delicious, but very stringy. And my mother was uber picky. Hey sis, remember? <laughs> and you know, she would go through the beans that you had strung and broken up into pieces and critique the length of bean and you know pick off the finest of strings which I understand you don't want to get a mouthful of green bean strings it was such a soul crusher for me that I thought I I hate it I'm not going to grow green beans well you know what I can rise above that and now that I am really canning a lot of food and really doing a lot of home preservation, I kind of understand where my mom was coming from. And I do believe that she was trying to teach and train uh, myself and my sister about the best way to have quality food. You know, what you put in the jar isn't going to improve when you can it. So another thing I have never tried to grow here is corn. So I might give corn a try and I'll talk at the end about a couple things I'm going to be doing that you can look forward to next year. And I apologize, Frankie does not have any front claws. He thinks he does. And he likes to go on either side of the door jam and scratch his imaginary claws. You wanna come and say hi, Poo Poo? Come on, Bubby. He's like, no, I sit over here, my mom, you shut up. <laughs> All right, so. Growing your own food. Now, I realize not everyone has an acre to grow, but I wanna challenge you in a couple areas. You know, we've learned to grow lawns, not food, and we treat our lawns so they look beautiful, which is harming our bee population. Can you give up a section of your pretty grass to grow some lawn? You know, maybe it's gonna be in an untraditional place, if that's a proper word you know, at the side of your home or even a small portion of your front yard. If that's not a possibility, or perhaps maybe you live in a condominium where you don't have grass that you're owned to plant in, can you do some container gardening? Can you do something as simple as grow herbs on your kitchen windowsill? 
all of those types of things really help your self-reliance. And I'm telling you, gardening is a wonderful joy. I learn each and every year. I had my first garden at age 20. So for 40 years, and off and on, I have not had gardens. Let me share that. I've been gardening for 40 years and there are new varieties, new techniques, new knowledge. There's always something to learn about gardening. So obviously you're not gonna rely as much on the supermarket. One of the things I've really noticed now that my garden is almost finished, I still have a couple tomato plants, one jalapeno left. Uh, I am relying more on fresh produce, either from the farmer's market, Pfeiffer Orchard, or from the supermarket. So having your own homegrown fresh food and figuring out strategies to extend your growing season will greatly re reduce pardon me, your reliance on grocery stores and having to be that consumer. It also helps protect you from price hikes. So one of the things that I have always done is as I'm growing, whether it's a tomato or a green bean or a jalapeno, I will take my prime specimen and save seeds from it so that next year I don't have to purchase seeds. Now, do I purchase seeds? Absolutely, particularly when I wanna buy something new. If I can buy something from the farmer's market, freshly harvested that has not been truck ripened or refrigerated. I have also saved seeds from that and I had lovely Indiana melon this year straight from a melon that I purchased at the Amish market. Number two, cooking from scratch. So I think gardening and cooking from scratch kind of go hand in hand, but not only is it healthier, it is definitely more cost effective than purchasing food from a restaurant constantly or even a lot of the convenience foods. One of the things I've noticed, I've frequently kept a couple vegetarian meals in my freezer and, and I won't share the brand, doesn't really matter. The price increase is incredible right now. So instead of doing that, I'm going to make some make ahead freezer meals and my freezer is coming Saturday, my second freezer. So I will have more space to be able to do that. Um, you also decrease your waste. I can tell you that straight up. So I have learned because I'm generally cooking for myself I do share with friends and neighbors, but I need small portions. And I have learned to cut recipes back, except I still have a tendency to make enough soup for an army. But I am not um, throwing away food because when you're buying prepackaged food, you get X amount and it spoils if you cannot eat it up in the period of time that it's still fresh and safe to eat. Another item, bread. I've also been a longtime bread maker, and guys, I'm getting really close to being ready to pull the trigger on my grain mill and start making some Ezekiel type bread. So stay tuned for that video. All right, number three, preserving food. Now, not everyone enjoys canning, has the supplies, the space, or even the ability just because it can be hard to lift a very heavy pressure canner that's full of jars and water, etc. But you can do other things that are much simpler. You can dehydrate food, you can pickle food, you can ferment it, you can freeze it. There are so many other ways to preserve food. You don't have to put everything that you grow or source into a jar. Number four, gardening. Now this is a little bit different from just growing your own food. This is more about uh, preserving seeds, propagating uh, crops so that they increase in size like a perennial or an herb. And I think the more you vegetable, I'm sorry, flower garden and decorative plant garden, the more you learn about the quality of your soil, how to deal with pests, what works, what doesn't work. 
you can gain a huge knowledge of herbs, of even essential oils that come from the herbs. And I think this is a skill that is very important. If you don't have a flower gardening space, you can do container gardening indoors and learn a lot that way as well. Number five, and I'm gonna say this with a little caveat, and that is foraging. Now, I don't want y'all to think I'm saying, go out and pick all the mushrooms out of your yard and eat them whether you think they're safe or not. That's not what I mean at all. There are a lot of edible things that are probably growing in your backyard right now. So things like dandelions, dandelion green. I've made delicious white clover jelly from the scourge of white clover that grows in my backyard. So there are a lot of beneficial weeds that not only can you eat, you can also use them for medicinal purposes. So I have several books, not included in these stacks, with things like uh, the Backyard Pharmacy is a really good one that talks about different things you might find growing in your yard that you can use, let's say, as a Band-Aid or to help heal poison ivy or to help a burn. So having that knowledge, very important. And if you know how to do it safely, um, you can forage for <laughs> other things like mushrooms. Um, wild greens, wild onions, things like that. Number six, sewing. If you all don't know how to sew, and I mean even just with needle and thread, that is such an important skill. So let's think about this for a minute. You could mend your clothes. You can sew patches on the inside of kids' jeans to make them last longer. You can hem up a pair of pants that you buy that are too long and you're not paying. I know the dry cleaners do some of those repairs, but also, you know, somebody who does sewing alterations, those are very important skills to have. For me, I've been sewing since I was 12 and I make all sorts of useful things, not just clothing, uh, things for the home as well. Things like canning mats, double-ended hot mitts, place mats, table runners. There are so many things if you have basic sewing skills that you can do. Now, if you have interest in a sewing machine, I really encourage you to go look at thrift stores, look on Facebook Marketplace or online garage sales. Uh, you can a lot of times find the manual, even if the manual is not included. You can find the manual online. But if you know just basic things, like how to sew something very basic, you can also make lovely gifts, lovely crafts, uh, both for yourself and for gift giving as well. I'm going to include in that sewing, I think it's great if you know how to knit and crochet. You can make very useful things for the home, for your personal care use, um, you know, sweaters and um, ponchos and blankets. Uh, I have made so many things in my lifetime and it's a skill that I'm very glad to have. If you don't know how to knit or crochet, it is so easy. And with the advent of YouTube, guys, there is a video for everything, I am telling you. You can learn and you can learn quite easily. And there are even videos for both right-handed people and left-handed people. So if you're a lefty, don't let that stop you. All right, number seven, harvesting your own water. Now, I'm not gonna go deeply into this because we talked about it on a previous video on one of my preparation videos. But even something as simple as having a rain barrel, if you're permitted to do so, or a catchment of some sort where you can catch rainwater and then use that water as gray water for watering plants, washing your car, uh, doing some of those kinds of things, that can really decrease your reliance on public utilities. Now, I'm not advocating that you all get a $5 five gallon bucket uh, with a toilet seat and some sawdust and you start your own compost toilet. That's not what I mean. 
where these skills can really come in handy is when we have outages or if the water becomes contaminated, um, like if they flush the hydrants, sometimes there's a boil advisory or the water's very discolored and you can't wash your clothes, those types of situations, it's really good to have the skill of knowing where you can source water if it's not coming out of your tap. Number eight, keep chickens, keep bees, or other small livestock. Now, I realize this is not a possibility for everyone. So even though I'm including it in the 10 skills, I completely understand that it may not be possible. What I wanna encourage you to do is, if you have interest in these things, maybe partner with someone who does have the land space and ability. Uh, where I get my goat's milk, the lady's offered several times, if you wanna buy a goat, because she's close enough, and um, breed it and then come down every day and milk it and pay for the feed you can keep i could keep the goat there and i've chosen not at this point to do that because i just don't really want to milk a goat every day right now with the, all the other things that i'm trying to accomplish but there are other possibilities in most areas you, there are no restrictions on beekeeping because bees are so endangered start with a small garden hive. And I'm gonna talk at the end a little bit about my beekeeping experience and what my plans are going forward. Number nine, basic repair and maintenance skills. This is so important that you do not have to call a plumber if you get too much hair in your drain, which is a continuous problem <laughs> with long hair, if you clog a toilet, if uh, you have a dripping faucet, if an outlet no longer works. Those are very simple and basic home repairs. And I'm gonna share a book with you in just a moment that you might consider purchasing. I got mine actually at a library sale for a dime and it's been invaluable to me. But learning how to do some of those basic things will save you time, it will save you aggravation, and it will certainly save you money. And then number 10 and final is learn how to create your own personal care and cleaning products. So you all know I'm a big soap, bath and body product maker, but also being able to make home cleaners. I have older videos where I have made walnut oil furniture polish. I uh, have, I think I've done a video where I've made, well, I know I have on laundry soap, also a vinegar-based cleaner with uh, orange peels in it. There are so many simple ways, and guys, it saves you tons and tons and tons of money. Do I use those exclusively 100%? I do not on the cleaning product side. Now, on the personal care side, on the soap, on uh, bath bombs, on lotions, yes, facial care, I definitely make all my own products. It saves me a lot of time. I'm not having the exposure to chemicals and it has saved me tons of money and provided a venue where I can actually earn money from a hobby. So I think really the final thing I can say is just be willing to continuously learn. Don't become stagnant in your life or say, well, I'm retired or I've reached thus and so age and so it's so much more convenient just to pay someone to do it. If you really want to be less reliant on being a consumer and more self-reliant, you're gonna have to learn a few things and that journey can be really fun. So, are you feeling overwhelmed? I wanna really encourage you. I don't want this to be an overwhelming experience. You can do something right now, today, to improve your self-sufficiency and decrease your reliance on being a consumer or getting all of your supplies and services from outside sources. So I would suggest you set some simple goals to work on. In most areas, we're coming into winter, so my outside work is gonna go way down. I still can in the winter. I 
can different things. I can things that aren't harvest reliant. So uh, soups, meats, broths, things like that. Sometimes um, sauces or ketchup, mustard, those type of things. <clears throat> so here's an example. Um, grow some food and what you can't grow, support your local farmers. Or can you barter your skills, your gifts, talents in exchange for some of those things that you need so that you're not changing dollars for the item or service, but you're actually bartering and it's a mutually beneficial situation. Is there a local community garden? <clears throat> that is a great option. We do have one in my local area and you, it's very inexpensive. You get a small plot, which you can plant, tend, harvest from, etc. Meet like-minded people, uh, get out and get some exercise. It's, it's a very good thing. Could you uh, purchase an arrow pot? Okay, now I realize this is consumerism, but can you purchase a grow system, like an arrow garden? or a veggie pod to extend your grow season. I am so delighted with my veggie pod. And guys, I have a robust crop, finally, of bee balm, which has a lot of beneficial properties. And it took me all summer to get that started, but I finally got it. So another point of encouragement, learn some simple old fashioned skills. There is a YouTube for everything. There really, really is. Here's a good example. I, yeah, okay. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Let me stand up here. So this is a five gallon bucket that I'm going to put my soft uh, white wheat in. And I purchased hamelids. So a hamelid is so much easier than prying a lid off and on. I'm not making it look easier, am I? You simply unscrew it. However, this piece is so hard to get on the bucket and I do not have good hand strength and I struggled and I struggled and I, you know, did all the suggested things of using a rubber mallet, etc., etc. I sat on it. <laughs> I figured if my weight couldn't get it on there, it wasn't going on. So I actually YouTubed it and I found a gal who was about my size that showed a method, and you have to be careful doing it and hold on to something, of standing on and stomping that rim into place worked like a charm. Now, I did have to have help with some of them because it was um, a little bit challenging not to fall off the bucket. But my point is there, it, YouTube can teach you a lot of good skills. The library is free, guys. You know, go check out your library. Go into the uh, section of learning and information and stay out of just the fiction section. <laughs> you can surf the net, read, read, read. I love learning new things. And I think one of my gifts and talents is I was blessed with a good mind. I enjoy reading and I love to learn something new. And I have basically zero fears about trying something I've never tried before. Other little simple things that you can do. And I think this is a big one. Ditch your cable. Guys, just ditch your cable. You don't need cable. Saves you a ton of money. But think about how much TV you're watching. And maybe, and I certainly have TV and I certainly watch a very small amount of TV. But think about all the time you spend sitting, staring at a box to be entertained. Can you use some of that time? Because time is always a resource that we feel lacking in. Can you use some of that time to learn and practice your new skills. You're also being um, inundated with ads and you must buy, 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 you need this, you must have this. And we've talked about this in our No Spin January videos as well. Don't be afraid to ask for help. So how did I finally get all of my gamma lids on the bucket? Well, our Azure standard 
uh, organizer or group leader, um, I actually reached out to her and said, I cannot get these doggone things on. Are there any tips or tricks? Because I knew she also had the buckets. And she was like, yes, um, my husband is going to stop by and come to find out, and this is really interesting, for many years, they were my neighbors two houses up and we had never met. Now they've moved more out in the country, but you know, I made a new friend, so to speak, and I got done what I needed to have done. And I bartered, although they didn't want anything, and gave them some soap for his trouble and time. So what are some skills I'm interested in? Well, you would think I have a book for everything. <laughs> And I do have a lot of books, but I use my books. And the reason I don't just rely on the internet is because sometimes the internet is down and sometimes I just like the feel of holding a good book in my hand. So some of basic books that I think are good to get ideas from, and again, don't forget about your local library, are these types of books. And I'll leave some of these as a link in the description box below. This one is called Modern Pioneering, Recipes, Projects, and Skills for a Self-Sufficient Life. Um, <laughs> like they even tell you how to make a watermelon keg. How about that? But this is written by a lady. And it, it is some very, very good information. Even stuff like how to ferment cabbage. If you've never done it before, I had never done it before. I did it this year and it turned out delicious, but I had to learn. This is another good one, um, The Backyard Homestead. And it tells what you can harvest from a quarter acre and it really talks about how to utilize your space very well and also some more food self-sufficiency tips. This book is called The Weekend Homesteader and it's a 12-month guide to self-sufficiency. So uh, what I like about this is it puts it in little monthly bites so it's pretty seasonally related but this is a very good book as well. Um, the Homesteading Handbook. This talks about growing your own food, canning, keeping chickens. And this is a little more out there, generating your own energy, crafting herbal medicine, and more. Urban Homesteading. So this is heirloom skills for sustainable living. Are you seeing a theme here? This is a great book. It's not a new book. It's called The Self-Sufficient Backyard for the Independent Homesteader. And it says copyright 2020, but uh, it does not read like a 2020. But it, it just has, as you can see, it's got a plot here. It has some great, great ideas for how to use the space that you have. And then an oldie but goodie you've probably all seen or heard about is John Seymour's Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It. Now this is a little more extreme, a little more off-grid, and if you wanna make a compost toilet, this is the book for you. <laughs> but there is good information in that as well. So those are just some of my favorite homesteading books. So on to what do I want to learn? So let me stand up here. Uh, maybe. Guys, I apologize. I <clears throat> have been really struggling with having some flare-ups of my systemic lupus and it and my psoriatic arthritis. So I've been extremely stiff and I grunt and groan a lot, but my pants are cute. So now this is consumer driven. I have to tell y'all, I was watching another YouTuber and she actually did, um, a video, it may have been sponsored by Walmart, but about Walmart clothing. And I got these pants, which are plaid and super cute, as you see, and they're bell bottom at the bottom for $7.88. And I swear I had this plaid in like kindergarten, so they're very retro chic. All right, so some of the things that I'm interested in. I have a woods, if you've been on my channel for a while you've seen my woods I have maple trees you can tap trees other than just maple trees I would love to tap some of my big maple trees safely and responsibly so I'm not har harming the tree so I'm not paying a fortune for the pure maple syrup that I'm paying right now 
and I'm trying to get away from using just cane sugar and I've shared I'm using coconut sugar, but I use a lot of honey and maple syrup and I do find that it does not increase your desire for sweets like pure table sugar does. Um, so that's one thing I'd like to do. Another, guys, I still want chickens and I have to share with you, um, across the way is a plat of homes and, um, someone has a very confused rooster that crows day and night, day and night. So I think in these times, being a conscientious objector, even when perhaps the township will say that you live in is against you having chickens, as long as you don't have roosters, you're not gonna have any noise. But I still would love to have chickens. Now, I'm not gonna grow chickens or have chickens for meat birds, simply for eggs, but I have not given up on my chicken dream. Another thing, and I shared this on a video probably a year ago, still have all the supplies, and that is brewing cider, mead, and herbal wine. Now, I'm not gonna be bringing you videos where I'm like, I'm uh, having me some wine. <laughs> I'm not a drinker of alcohol, however, having mead which is a honey wine is a very beneficial thing to have on hand to extract beneficial properties from different herbs that i do grow and there's also nothing wrong i don't believe there's anything wrong with having um, some alcohol on hand for medicinal purposes for coughs for chest congestion etc so i have not given up on my dream of having honey mead and when I get ready to do that, guys, I will definitely bring you along. Someone noticed that I had kombucha on the counter. So when my son had moved back and was helping me post-operatively, he was a big brewer of kombucha. So yes, I have started my four-way into making kombucha because it is so, so good for you, good for your gut health. So this is something I'm actually into. I have been a long time off and on keeper of honeybees. Now this is the beekeeper's Bible. It has everything in it that you would ever wanna know. It's pretty complex for a beginning beekeeper. I have both a small garden hive, then I have the large uh, flow hive. You've probably all seen ads for where you don't, it's actually like having honey on tap. You don't have to get into the hive. The problem that I have here and why I have been largely unsuccessful is because we have a huge population of yellow jackets or wasps that uh, keep attacking the hive and they will totally clean out a hive, eat all the honey, eat all the wax, kill all the bees, kill the queen. So I am going to have to take some steps if I want to resume beekeeping to lower my wasp population on my property. And then just something else to share with you. This is my um, purchase. I'm just sure I got this from the library, but it's Home Improvement 123, and I believe it came from Home Depot. I'm pretty sure because it's orange. This has so many good basic things that you can do yourself without having to call a plumber. So having a book like this on hand, invaluable. So I also would like to improve my building skills. I really just don't have the tools for it, uh, but being able to build simple structures would be greatly helpful for me. And I also would like to come up with some type of a root cellar for all of the potatoes, onions, etc., that I want to grow and be able to keep aside from just simply in the refrigerator or have to use them very quickly or can or freeze them. So I'm trying to make my homestead work for me. And I just wanna encourage you as you go along your self-sufficiency journey that you know there's a lot of things you can do. You can sell your produce if you have an overabundance with a little farm stand if it's permitted in your area. You can sell your seeds like I do, you can make soap, bath and body products, those type things, sell that. 
people love homemade breads, jams and jellies, crafts. You know, that has really helped supplement my income. I also have not shared this. Uh, I have a beautiful loom and I can weave um, scarves, different articles of clothing that I can then turn around and sell. So the possibilities are really endless. It kind of boils down to what do you have the time, the willingness, and maybe a little cash to get it started to do. But many of these skills are free to learn if you utilize your free resources. You know, you can really be living your best life and be a lot less reliant on what's going on today in our economy. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I want to thank you all that responded that you would like to see a freezer tour. So my plan at this point <laughs> is once the freezer comes and chills down, I'm going to empty out my seven cubic foot freezer and put all the items in there so that I can manually defrost because it's not an auto defrost, my chest freezer, then reorganize and then I will bring you a video because right now it's just gonna look like a game of Jenga while I, while I unload everything. But I am so excited to actually have more space. I'm looking into the possibility of purchasing like half a pig, and you know buying some bulk things that i just up till now had not had room for to help inflation proof my food supply so as always if you've enjoyed this please give me a like and uh, drop me a comment below what do you think of videos like this is there any of the skills i mentioned that you're interested in learning or would like me to provide more information about i hope you are well happy and blessed. And I will see you all on Saturday with the new schedule. Take care.